Scott here again with another Aperture Tip for you. It's been a while, but uh, this is one that uh, I've been meaning to do for a few weeks. Finally carved out a few minutes to share this with you. So um, here we're just looking at a few images of a uh, beach here in San Diego, Swamis, pretty famous from the Beach Boys songs. And um, the thing I wanted to talk about today was chromatic aberration. So you can see this was before the sun fully came up, um, very low light. I don't know if that's uh, what makes chromatic aberration more prevalent, um, or maybe it's just the you know relatively lousy kit lens that I own. But let me show you what we're talking about here. So if you zoom in on the edge of this rock, and you can see this blue fringe. Now it may be a blue fringe, it may be yellow. Um, it has to do with you know different wavelengths of light coming in and hitting the sensor at slightly different times or angles. Uh, you can look on Wikipedia for all the details. But you end up with these fringes here. Um, I do have three shots here, so I'll in like I'll likelihood be taking this into um, Nick HDR to do some blending and then some more processing later on. And um, the HDR tools have ways of dealing with chromatic aberration, but I found that I can do a better job with an aperture itself. So let's um, let's shift views here and get my inspector open and grab a chromatic aberration adjustment. So here's the brick. Close this down a little bit so it's near the top. So we have a, a blue fringe here. So I want to grab a cyan to be exact. I want to grab that slider and move it away from cyan. And you're going to see, if you watch here while I drag the slider, you're going to see that it's going to go away. Now I can go too far and I can get red, or I can go too far the other way and you see the blue really grow. You want to just tug it gently until that edge disappears and it's looking right around there and I'm looking here while I'm dragging the slider. I'm not paying attention to the number so much because I honestly don't know what 0.65 means. I'm looking at the image. So real quickly we can do a before and after. And you, know, you scan around. Usually this is uh, you'll see chromatic aberration on the edges of things. And you can see before, it's very slight there, it's hard to see. There's some up here, and then after, and that goes away through the whole image. I don't have many other subjects here. There's no other rock faces in the background or anything like that that um, might suffer from this. But now the nice thing, I've got that done. If I go back to my browse view, um, I can lift that adjustment and apply it to my other two photos. So um, I have a shortcut. Uh, it's a command shift J for adjustments, so I can lift that off of here. Let me move to another picture. Just before we apply it, we'll zoom in. We can see that same aberration. Um, I'm going to do a command shift V to paste it, and it's gone away. And use my arrow keys, paste it on that one as well. So I've taken care of my chromatic aberration right here in Aperture, and I find that gives me a better result after I blend the images somewhere else. So it's like any like white point or black kind of point setting your exposure right. You can do those basic things right here in Aperture and then take your images to other tools to do what those tools do best. HDR, color effects, um, you know, blending, layering, whatever it might be. So that's chromatic aberration. Aperture's got good uh, tools for dealing with it. And next time you have it in your photo, now you know what to do. Thanks. Thank you.